Welcome back. You're listening to The Way Home with Laura Smith. Here's Laura. Well, I know we take this time of the year normally to kind of regroup. That's on all different levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, um, career-wise, family-wise, all sorts of goals, resolutions, and things like that. But I think what we are really on a quest for is a way to becoming more authentically who we are as human beings. And that's a little bit of a different quest because it, I think, takes some different tools to get there. I have a wonderful person here today who has a great book, who's going to help us do just that and give us some great guidelines. Brigitte Visser is here. She's from somewhere in England right now. And she is what is known as a soul empowerment coach. She's written a book called Becoming Authentically Me. And so we are grateful to have you with us across the pond and into the new year. Thanks for coming on, Brigitte. Thank you so much for having me, Laura. And Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year to you, too. I found that this was the first year I went through some personal trials. My beautiful father passed away just three weeks before, um, two weeks before Christmas, actually. And uh, so that it seemed to sort of change my focus on just about everything this year. So when New Year's rolled around and I had my annual party at my house, I, I went through that and got through that. And it was wonderful. But I really found that for the first time I have in my adult life, I haven't sat down and really thought about what I want to become in the new year because it's just been so fraught with things that are difficult um, in the past month or so. But I do know that unless I do that, it, it, it the year will get away from me and I won't have really gone inward enough to think about what it is I truly want and truly want to become. You have written truly the book on becoming your authentic self, and tell me about, A, what it means to be a soul empowerment coach and how that could help us uh, maybe find our authentic selves. So sorry to hear about your father. Thank you. Um, so becoming your authentic self, and I, th I think, you know, the last couple of years have been very much uh, a reflective, I call it a, a transformational time and a re reflective period for many people. And it's made them think about life, you know, because we're so caught up in that red race of life of paying our bills, you know, working and paying our bills that we deviate away from ourselves, right? It's like playing hide and seek with ourselves. And when we talk about becoming our authentic selves, and I know this word has been thrown, a lot, thrown around a lot in the last couple of years, and people think, yeah, well, what does it mean to become your authentic self? And it's really about rather than living a mind-centered life, it's returning to a heart space-centered life. There's a big difference, right? Because we ingest everything within, we ingest everything with our mind. So what we feed our mind is how we shape our reality. And the key is when you live a heart-centered life, it's you look at things from a different perspective. And when we talk about that inward journey, as you just said, that is really about reflecting within yourself and healing um, what has what what still what still needs to be healed. And we always attract the people, right? And in my case, it's been very toxic. My whole life's been a, you know a toxic ride. Um, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, the challenges that I've been through, but it's it's traveling inward. And once you travel inward and you heal the trauma within, your outlook on life will change because we are all energy. And people often forget that. They think we're this, you know, this blob of an organ or an, an organism, right? We're just this body, but we're actually the soul within this body, and we are divine alchemists. And people are like, Yeah, but what what does that what does that even mean? It means that you create your reality according to what you feed your mind, you know, and that's it. That's it. So it really, truly is an inside game, much more yes. than when we think of coaches, we often think of, well, sports coaches or maybe a um like a, a, a coach for helping us do one-on-one -on -one physical training or something like that. Now, at least we've gotten into the phase where we understand a bit more about having a life coach, somebody that can help us kind of 
get our goals going. But this inner work, this soul work is often, I think a lot of people maybe are um, a, a little more reticent on it because, as you said, sometimes you, when you go inward, you do have to face those difficult things. I know even just from what I went through with losing my dad, thinking about him sometimes brings great joy. Other times it brings me sadness to think he's not here. So then I'll deflect and I'll start thinking of something else and run around and start doing a bunch of tasks and things like that um, to, to sort of avoid feeling those feelings. Um, so, yeah, so, but, but if you have someone working with you, sort of basically walking you through things, um, I think it would be really wonderful to have someone like you to do that with. And, you know, it's good to feel when we, when we feel rather than deflecting, right? It's, we have to reflect. So when you feel the need to cry or you feel the need to talk about your dad or even talk to your dad because your dad is listening. He's always there. He really is always there. Um, and he will hear you. And sometimes what they do, what spirit does, and I noticed from my step, my stepdad, not my, my dad is, you know, he passed in 1988 when I was 14, but my stepdad is sometimes around and I will smell all of a sudden I'll smell smoke in the house because he used to smoke cigarettes. And it's like, John, what do you want? Or it's my grandma and I smell the lavender. And I'm like, grandma, what are you doing here? You know, mm -hmm. and you become more aware of these things or you'll find pennies. Um, or it's, it's a song will pop on the radio or you'll find something or a book will drop. It's these little signs and these little signs to tell you that, you know, like in your instance, like, and, and you'll see the signs. It's like, they're telling us they're okay up there and they want you to be okay. Right. That's what I'm feeling as well. But it, it's hard sometimes because you, you go mm. through things that, and I know that, um, you have talked about in your writings, you know, you, you went through trauma yourself as a child and yeah. to overcome and then later at becoming a model and mm. everything you went through in the industry and, and you have to really deal with these, these, these personal things while I, while still maintaining a regular life. Like you said, we do still have to pay the bills. We still have to make dinner. We still have to get together with our families and things like that. So it's not like, um, one, one is mutually exclusive to the other. You're like deeply authentic or you're being a real person and getting things done. So how do you integrate this? So I know what some of the things that you use are, are sound bowls and, and things like that. Tell us some of the different modalities you use to get people to go inward and feel safe. So I actually use light language and the sound bowls. And every time I do my light language healing, and people are like, what's light language healing? Well, I always say it's like gerbil language. So it's, I can do demo if you want. Um, and it's, I call it the galactic energies and it's so powerful because what, it, what I say, you won't understand on a conscious level, but you don't need to understand it on a conscious level. Your soul understands it. And that's the main thing. So when it speaks to your soul, that's when it's, you know, it, you start to heal. It's such powerful healing. I've had people, you know, come back to me and, and they're like, one of uh, one person, she said to me, you, you know, I had to go into hospital the next day and I had surgery. And she's like, I was so scared, but you did the light language session. And she's like, my fear had just dissipated. I had no issues going into hospital the next day. That's wonderful. You know, isn't it? We They talk a lot about, I know A Course in Miracles talks a lot about there's only two em emotions or two reality. And one is fear and one is love. But fear really is a terrible thing because it really, I mean, in some senses, if it helps to save you, if you're fearful of something and therefore you take caution or warning in that sense. But other than that, fear is just one of those emotions that seems to really block our sense of wellness and, and, and being. And so, um, so this, this idea of really being able to heal very much in the inner workings of oneself. How does sound healing work? Because I've, I've heard people use those sound bowls and it truly is a remarkable thing when, when you hear them, it just like, it, it goes so deeply into you. How is it healing though? What is the, is there a science behind it? So I have 
alchemy healing bowls. I have quite, you have the, the crystal healing bowls. I don't have those. I have the cosmic healing bowls and the alchemy healing bowls. So they are all, they're all 432 hertz. And that alleviates the stress. But it all depends on how you play the bowls. Um, because bowls have consciousness too. So I have one that's for the throat. And uh, that's really Archangel Michael. Then I have a green one, which is the Cosmic Heart, which is Archangel Raphael. And then I have the Laughing Buddha. And the Laughing Buddha is a stubborn one. Um, but I don't play them loud because they will, it, it's the toning. And the toning is what, as, as my guides always say, it's the toning that jolts the cells within your, within your body, within your DNA. And, Again, you don't have to understand it. I mean, it's very, when you hear the, you know, the sound of bowls, you get into a state of deep, it's kind of deep relaxation. And when I combine that with light language, that's a double whammy, as I call it, because it's double as powerful. And, um, I've had somebody here, uh, several weeks ago and she was terribly depressed. Bless her cotton socks. And because she's in a very difficult relationship, but she's made that choice to stay with him, but she's working on herself. So she's healing. And so she was, I had a session with her for like an hour and it was the strange, she said it was the strangest thing because I saw her hands move and she's like, but I wasn't moving them. He's like, I felt them move, but I wasn't moving them. And um, she left and she said, I, I, she was just speechless. And two days later, she just said to me, she like, it was so, so powerful because it gave me so much more clarity. And she's like, I was really in a funk. And I think that is just so, so important. The other thing, and I do want to touch on that because you were talking about fear and love, right? These are, you know, we live in a world of duality, of polarities. So fear is, as Saint Germain, the Ascended Master Saint Germain, because I work a lot with him, he always says, Fear is the Darth Vader to your Jedi, right? Because fear is an illusion. It's created within the mind because we get bombarded with, with things from like the, you know, the media, TV, basically everything, everything, um, we get bombarded with. Um, and love is why we're here. We're here to return to a love for ourselves and others. And that's that heart-centered life. Ah, you, you, your voice even has a calming effect because I'm, I'm listening to it, and then just it's how important it is to be able to come down to that place where you can just literally stop that, that mind, that monkey mind they call it in some yeah. traditions, and to really just get back to your soul. Um, tell us about becoming authentically me the book and um what your main message in it is and where people can find it yeah so the book becoming authentic me well i i started writing that in uh, 2000 to be honest and i had to go through many many life experiences because you know i was abused as a child and it's when you don't resolve your issues your trauma it's one bit of trauma creates another bit of trauma. And so it took me years because I just created more and more trauma and I carried the weight of the world on my shoulders. And even in the modeling industry, I was abused. I was bullied as a kid at school. So I talk about that very openly. I talk about the fact that I used drugs, nearly killed myself after my stepdad had passed away. I talk about the fact that my dad passed away and that was very difficult. Um, I was also bullied in the workplace. I had toxic relationships. And I will say something, and I, I talk about this in my book as well, about forgiveness, um, about taking accountability for your life, for whatever you go through. It doesn't matter what you go through because your experiences are not here to taunt you. They're here to expand your awareness and for you to understand life. So there is a lot that I, I also talk about depression because I even, I suffered from depression, even though I didn't take medication, but I was in a deep, I was in a deep hole. 
Um, and my ex was in bed with the Crips in Holland and I had my life threatened and I even, you know, tried to take my own life, a very lame attempt on my own life, but that wasn't the way forward. So I talk about my healing journey and all the healing modalities I studied because I really had to walk that journey inward. And when you ask your guides for help or the, the archangels, the ascended masters, whatever you believe in, then not, you have to understand people always say, well, I'm going to pray because I want to have a better life. But you need to heal yourself first before you, before you can understand. You know, I always say you have to heal yourself first, understand your experiences before you can walk that journey to having a better life. You need to alchemize your experiences. Um, I also talk very much about mental health um, because that is such a big issue issue right now, um, especially with the youth. Um, it's not like, you know, I grew up in the 1980s where life was so vastly, vastly different. But people have this, people judge one another. And I think that's a lot about the ego as well. Um, and it, I, I've had to learn this as well because I walked around with so much shame with anxiety, with fear. Um, I, I used to starve myself. I was a pro at that, of not eating, even though I worked my socks off because that is something, that was something I could control. And, um, yeah, so for me, it took me many, many years to overcome that. And I just want people to understand that there is always light at the end of the tunnel. I don't care how dark it is, right? If you take that responsibility for all of your experiences and you say, you know what, I want to improve my life and do something different every single day. It's to, I call that, it's unlearning the learned, everything that you've learned and reprogramming yourself, getting rid of that conditioning. Now, I live a life without shame, without fear, because I... I mean, I've been trampled upon. I've been kicked around, so to speak, you know, and I always allowed people, well, the words that they said, I allowed them to hurt me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why? Why? It doesn't matter what people think of you. It matters what you think of you and how you feel about yourself. And when people say you're rotten or they, they say mean things about you, it says more about them and how they feel about themselves than it says about you. Because we're all reflections of one another. We're all teachers of one another. And we're all just here to walk one another back home. You know, people think that we're separate. Really? Actually, no, we're not. We're one. And it's just, yeah, our physical appearance may be different. But the light within our soul is the same as everyone on this planet. Mm -hmm. Yes, these are, you know, universal truths that almost every healing modality, almost every traditional teaching and non-traditional teaching of spirituality teach us. One thing is learning it. Another thing is living it and practicing it, which is often the decision that's hardest to make because I'm sure it would have been so much easier with everything that you went through, you, you're talking about a lot of different types of trauma there as a child. Mm. And then even as an adult, um, it, in, in some instances, some would say it's, it's easier just to let it overtake you and just say sayonara and, you know, leave. Yeah. But obviously that's never the answer. Um, and if we can just, hang in there and also reach out. So you offer coaching, soul empowerment coaching. So when you were trying to making the decision that you wanted to live and you wanted to live happily, did you have anyone helping you or did, was it something that you did? Was it all self-discovery? Yeah, it was self-discovery for me. Um, and it was hard, but I, I, I'm so thankful I have, my mom is a very, very strong personality. And she, I mean, she went through her own trauma in, in her own childhood. And 
you know, she's very, very resilient. So I have that from her. So I would never sit, you know, I would never bow down to defeat. That wasn't me. So I did soldier on regardless of what happened to me. Oh, my goodness, Laura, I even sold my home in St. Pete in Florida just to get away from an ex who just harassed me. And I loved that home. And I felt like such an immense failure that I bought another home, which was a money pit. But these, you know, I had to learn this. And so every time that I went in for healing or I wanted to study a healing modality was a return to myself. And it just, it took many, many years. And that's okay. But I will say this. I love the meditations from David G. And you can listen to them on YouTube. And they're like 20 minutes. And I always say to people, just plug them in your ears and start, you know, plug, plug them in your ears and listen to these 20 minute meditations. They're guided meditations, but they're so powerful. They will make you return to, you know, recent, it's like recentering yourself and having more clarity. And that's a great way to start. It is a great way to start. And I think reading your book, Becoming Authentically Me, is a great start for maybe someone who's hearing this right now and feels that they are going through so much and would like to see a path out. And indeed, they can also do you work um, with people either uh, remotely via Zoom or anything like that? Or or do yes, you not I do, do that? I do. do. I, I okay. do. I do. I do. I'm in. So, the, I'm actually in the midst of writing my second book, which is about India. <laughs> so... Okay. Well, you'll have to come back on when you finish the book. But I so appreciate it. Brigitte Visser is my guest. Her last name is V-I-S-S-E-R. Her book is Becoming Authentically Me. She is a soul empowerment coach, which means she is available to you. I Tell us your website. I believe it's soul empowerment or something. Well, it's powersoulhealing.com. Sorry, got it back to front. Yes. Power Soul Healing. Dot com power soul healing dot com you can see everything that Brigitte offers and um, hopefully you won't feel alone in your journey to your own wellness and being your best self Brigitte thank you so much for joining us today and for your wonderful words of wisdom empowerment and healing thank you thank you so much Laura. can I say one more thing please yeah so for anybody out there that doesn't feel love right just know that even though i don't know you on on a conscience on a, on a conscious level um i and i'll know you on a soul level just know that i love you ah thank you thank you you are loved that's the message yeah. brigitte is her you're listening to the way home we'll be right back <laughs> 